Welcome to our video edition of Learn with LBSI for the month of October 2021. For this month, we will demonstrate how to use the Payment Wizard within SAP Business One. The Payment Wizard is useful for creating multiple incoming or outgoing payments at once with just a few clicks. You can use the Payment Wizard for any type of payment that is either a check or bank transfer. To begin, let's go over a prerequisite on the Business Partner Master Data screen by navigating to Business Partners, Business Partner Master Data. Once the Business Partner Master Data screen opens, select the Payment Run tab and make sure that the payment methods are checked so they can be selected on the invoice and thus appear in the Payment Wizard. If you want your invoice to default to a specific payment method, make sure that you highlight the row and select Set as Default. Whichever payment method that was set as default on the Business Partner record will automatically appear on the accounting tab of either the AR or AP invoice. If you want to be able to select different values, you will need to make sure that the Include checkbox is checked next to the payment method you want to select on the invoice. In order to demonstrate how to use the Payment Wizard, let's navigate to Banking, Payment Wizard in order to open the Payment Wizard window. The first screen that appears will be an initial overview of what the Payment Wizard does in the system. If you would like to read all the information, you can. If not, you can select Next to move on to the next screen, which contains Step 1 of the 8-step process. The Payment Run Selection screen is where you can choose to either start a new payment run or select a previously saved payment run. If you select the Load Save Payment Run radio button, a table will appear with your previously saved selection criteria and or recommendation report from a previously ran payment run. You can also select the View Executed Payment Runs checkbox to display previously executed payment runs. If you want to go to the very last step of the payment run, you can do so by selecting the checkbox, Go to Final Step. In order to load a saved payment run, simply select the payment run and click Next to go through the payment wizard. However, for this example, let's select the Start New Payment Run radio button to create an entirely new payment run with the payment wizard. After clicking Next, it will take us to Step 2 which contains the general parameters of the payment run. In the Payment Run Name field, it will contain an auto-generated name for the payment run. This auto-generated name will contain the date the payment run was created as well as the specific payment run for the day. You do have the ability to change the name if you do not like the default naming convention. Next, the Payment Run Date field will default to today's date and will be the posting date of the incoming or outgoing payments that are created by this particular payment run. The next payment run date field is where you can enter in the next date that you plan to run the payment wizard. This is used for filtering out some future transactions that need paid and is mainly used to benefit from discounts that may be earned from making the payments before a specific date. For example, if the last date to earn the discount on an invoice is the 17th, and I set the next payment run date to the 15th, then the payment wizard will not recommend that I pay that invoice since I indicated that I will run the payment wizard on the 15th. Under the payment type section, you can select if you are processing outgoing or incoming payments for this particular payment run. Moreover, under the payment means section, you can select if you are processing checks and or bank transfers by selecting either of the corresponding checkboxes. If you have a different numbering series for your incoming or outgoing payment orders or documents, you can select a numbering series for any of the corresponding dropdowns. Next, if you have a minimum amount that you want to pay or process received payments for, you can specify a minimum amount in either of the fields. The final section is the Payment Due Date Determination section. Here you can determine if the due date of the payments is determined by either the payment run date or the document due date on the specific invoices. We recommend that you select the document due date in this section. Furthermore, you can also select the BP reference number checkbox in order to display the business partner reference number column instead of the document number in the generated payments. After you update the information and click next, you will be taken to step three, the business partner selection criteria, where you can specify which business partners are included in the payment run. In the code field is where you can refine which business partners will be selected. 
If you want all business partners to be included, then you can leave the code from and to fields blank. Furthermore, you can also select the expanded selection criteria option and select up to five additional options to filter which business partners are selected. Below the code field, you can select which vendor or customer group to select the business partners from by selecting a group in either of the dropdowns. Since I selected the payment run to process outgoing payments, only the vendor group dropdown will appear. Moving on to the properties button, you can refine the business partners by a particular property by checking any of the corresponding checkboxes. After properties, there is a checkbox where you can choose to include vendors with debit balances or customer credit balances by selecting the indicated checkbox. Below that is a checkbox that includes vendors and or customers with zero balances, and when you click on the checkbox, you will need to select which document types to include with the specific business partners. After you have updated the selection criteria, you can click Add to List in order to add the business partners to the table. If you do not want to include some business partners, you can uncheck their checkbox in the table below. After you have all the business partners you need checked, you can proceed to click the next button to move on to step 4, which is the document parameter screen. From here you will be able to change how the fields will be sorted by selecting a value in the selection priority field. After that, the only other field that is required is the due date 2 field, and as such, you will not be able to move on to the next screen without entering any value into that field. Moreover, the apply to cash discount transaction checkbox, when checked, will apply the due date range to all AP transactions. When this checkbox is not checked, then the due date range will not apply to the AP transactions with cash discounts. The tolerance days field is where you can enter in a number of days to subtract from the due date to field. So for example, if it will take three days to process a payment with your bank, then it would be best to enter in a tolerance days of three into that field. Moving on to the minimum cash discount percentage field, you can enter in a minimum percentage that will hide AP transactions that contain a cash discount below that percentage. Furthermore, you can filter the results even further by entering information into the document date, balance due, document number, and blanket agreement fields. You can also include manual journal entries or negative transactions for business partners with a positive balance by checking any of the corresponding checkboxes. As a note, these checkboxes are selected by default. After making your selection, you can proceed to click the next button to be taken to step 5, the Payment Method Selection Criteria screen. In this screen is where you can select which payment method you want to process payments for by checking the checkbox next to the desired payment method. In the Max Outgoing or Incoming Amount field, will be the current GL account balance for the account selected. If you want to change this amount to limit how much is sent out at once, you can do so by adjusting the value in that field. You may also want to remove the amount in the Max Outgoing Payment Amount field, as the Recommendations window will only provide recommendations up to that amount. Moreover, if you need to adjust which account the payments are going into or out of, you can select a different account by selecting the lookup button in the account number field. Finally, if you'd like to include any GL interim account balances, like from clearing accounts, you can select the corresponding checkbox. After you have selected the payment methods you want to process, you can click the next button to move on to the recommendation report for step six. The recommendation report will display all the invoices that need paid for the given selection criteria. It will display the various invoices that need paid categorized by each business partner. Once you expand the business partners, you will see each outstanding invoice associated with each business partner. In the GL account code field, you will see which GL account the amount will be taken out of, which corresponds to the GL account that was entered on the house bank account setup screen for the account associated with the payment method. The document number column will display the document number of the invoice or other marketing document, and you can also click on the golden arrow to be taken to the specific document. When an invoice or document is past its due date, the asterisk column will display an asterisk when an invoice is overdue, and in the overdue days column, 
the number will be a red positive number to indicate how many days past due the document is. Otherwise, if the document is not due yet, there will be no asterisk and the overdue days column will contain a negative number. Further down the list of fields in this window, you can see the total amount on the invoice as well as how much is left to be paid in the balance due column. If you would like to apply an extra discount to the document being paid, you can enter in a number in the discount percentage field. If the payment terms on the invoice contain a discount and you are paying prior to the discount due date, then the discount percentage will appear automatically with the discounted amount in the document amount field as well. If you would like to pay a specific amount against the invoice, you can manually adjust the document amount to the new dollar amount you want to pay. The payment amount field will contain the total dollar amount that will be paid against the business partner selected. Moving on to the payment currency field, this will display which currency you are paying the invoices in. In the number of checks field, you can specify how many checks you want to send to the particular business partner. This will default to one check, but if you'd like to write two checks for instance, you can change the number to two and specify the amounts on each check in the first and next check fields. For GL accounts that are cash flow relevant, you can specify the particular primary form item in the corresponding dropdown. This is relevant if you want to use the statement of cash flows. You can also set the default value for this field on the cash flow tab on the general settings window. If there were any documents that should appear in the table but are missing, you can select the non-included transaction button to see if those documents contained any errors. Otherwise, you may need to go back to the selection criteria and adjust accordingly. Towards the bottom right of the screen, you will see a total of all the incoming and outgoing payments selected, as well as the total amount from both the incoming and outgoing payments. You will also have the ability to add manual payments to this window as well. If you select the Add Manual Row option towards the bottom, a Payment Row Details window will appear. In this window, you can select either a customer, vendor, or GL account via any of the following radio buttons. Depending on the button you select, in the BP Code field, you can select the business partner you want to send payments to if you are dealing with outgoing payments, or you can select the business partner you are receiving payments from if you are dealing with incoming payments. If you select the Account Radio button, you will be able to select the GL account in the first field. After you enter in the business partner, you can select the payment method from the corresponding field. Next, in the House Bank Account field, you can select which bank account the amount will be taken out of if you are dealing with outgoing payments and vice versa. You can enter in the specific payment amount in the Payment Amount field. If you need to adjust the currency for the payment, you can do so by changing the value in the Currency field. The Reference field will allow you to enter in a value that will appear in the Reference field on the generated payment document. Finally, the additional free text fields can be used to add any additional information you want to the generated payment. After you update the window and select OK, you will now see the amount appear in the Recommendation Report. Once you have all the payments selected, you can proceed to click Next to be taken to Step 7 which is where you can choose how you want to process the results of the payment run. The first option, Save Selection Criteria, will save everything up until the Recommendation Report. Secondly, the Save Recommendation option will save the Selection Criteria as well as the Recommendation Report from the current payment run. Next, the Execute Payment Order Run is used when creating electronic outbound bank files without creating payment documents within SAP Business One. If you add a manual payment, the first two options will be grayed out. The last option, Execute Payment Run, is the option that will generate the payments and payment documents and is what you want to select when you are ready to create the payments that were selected in the recommendation report. This will create the various incoming or outgoing payment documents and close the marketing document associated with them. After selecting the Execute Payment Run option and clicking Next, a window will appear asking if you want to continue. Click Yes and you will see a message stating that the payment wizard has been executed successfully. Once you select OK, you will be taken to the Payment Run Summary and Printing screen. 
This will show you how many items were added to the system, like the number of payment orders, payments, checks, and or bank transfers under the Payment Run Summary section. From this point, the payments and payment documents have been created in the system, and the corresponding invoices that are linked to the payment documents have been closed. Towards the right side of the window is where you can select various reports to print. Simply select the checkbox next to the reports you want to print and select the print button. If you would like to see what some of the reports look like prior to printing, you can select the button next to the report name. Furthermore, if you would like to print checks from this window as well, you can do so by selecting the checks checkbox and clicking the print button to automatically print any checks associated with the payment run. Once you are done on this screen, you can proceed to click finish to close the payment wizard. This month's tip of the day is useful for when you need to free up some space on your screen when you have multiple windows open at once. You can easily close multiple screens at once by selecting either the close all or close all but this option within SAP Business One. While you have multiple screens open and you want to close all of them, you can simply navigate to window and select close all to close all the windows currently open on your screen. If you want to keep one screen open while closing all the other open screens, you can select under window, close all but this, and it will close all of the other open windows that are not currently selected. The payment wizard within SAP Business One is great for quickly processing multiple incoming or outgoing payment transactions at once. Join us as we help you learn more about what SAP Business One has to offer by clicking the subscribe button and turn on post notifications so you never miss a new video. As an SAP Gold Partner, LBSI can help you take full advantage of everything the system has to offer. To get in contact with us, visit our website at www.lbsi.com and navigate to the contact link. You can also email us at sales at lbsi.com for sales related inquiries or SAP support at lbsi.com if you're an existing client in need of support assistance.